Okay, so today it's a bit warmer and now uh, it's operating correctly. The ambient temperature just now is uh, just this, like 13, 14 degrees roughly. Uh, and the air coming out is, the air coming out of the unit is, Trying to get a stable reading. So it seems to be half in the air temperature and the air's flown out really, really fast. These are the pressures. Uh, I've managed to get it filled correctly with refrigerant. The whole evaporator is now uh, being utilised properly. Uh, I think eventually I will maybe be shortening the capillary tube. I'm not sure. Maybe that's a bad idea. Uh, because with a capillary tube uh, it's going to work good at certain conditions but not at others but with a TXV uh, it would be able to work better at all conditions but the discharge pressure is now getting really really uh, it's really hot uh, and the return of the heat exchanger well it's pretty much the same temperature as the water uh, power consumption is up a bit as well, that's good. Uh, and the temperature of the water co that comes out of this pipe is, is, uh, is just over 2 degrees Celsius hotter than uh, the water going into the unit. But th that's because it's flown so fast. Uh, with a fl fast flow rate it makes it a bit more efficient. But uh, it doesn't appear to be heating as much. Uh, I'll switch this heater off. It's just circulating, filtering the water. But now, now in these conditions with the water temperature at about uh, 32.5 Celsius, it's working better. And it's probably giving out about 2 kilowatts of heat. But uh, what I'd like to do in the future is uh, get maybe a 12,000 BTU air conditioner and use that. Because this, uh, this heat exchanger could take quite a bit more. I think it could take about 3 or 4 kilowatts. I'm only putting about two into it. Not a good way to tell that your evaporator is getting used properly, as you can see. Uh, that's a return from the evaporator, it's got condensation on it and it's really cold. If you undercharge the system, you won't get, you won't get uh, the, the return of the evaporator uh, cold like that. And you'll not get full evaporator usage, which may overheat the compressor. Uh, and if you overcharge it, uh, the evaporator temperatures and pressures will go up and then you'll probably have liquid flood back into the compressor. I've noticed now that it seems to have these strange temperature fluctuations that sometimes the compressor starts getting really hot and then it cools down. It's currently reasonably cold. Uh, the discharge as well is, I think, has gone down in temperature a bit as well. It seems to, it seems to just sort of uh, go through cycles. Can't explain that. I don't know why. Yeah, it's cooled down quite a bit. The moisture content is still a bit too high though, and that's the amount of uh, conden condensate we're getting coming off it, which seems about right. I was looking at the pressure temperature app on my phone, it's a refrigerant slider from Danfoss and that there, the pressure exactly matches the temperature of the water and I looked at it and it matched up exactly with the thermometer That's that, that pressure there actually corresponds exactly to the water temperature uh, and what I've been doing to try and dry the refrigerant is I've got a huge filter dryer here uh, this tank is closed and I've just been uh, taking quite a bit out of the discharge and that just fills up the filter dryer then I slowly release it back in uh, there's quite a surplus of refrigerant in here I think which is accumulating in the heat exchanger uh, I just think it's got quite a large internal volume I'd probably will survive without that refrigerant then what I'll do is I'll leave it in the filter dryer for a little while it's just backing up in there there's quite a bit of it in there 
and then I'll very slowly release it back in. Uh, just gently. So it's not uh, put, so it's not flooding a load of liquid into the compressor. Uh, it does have a built-in suction accumulator. It starts making a bubbling noise and that's when the accumulator fills up. I think uh, for a system like this I really need a bigger filter dryer. Uh, something about this size would do. But uh, I really would like to get one that has just solder fittings on it rather than flares. I want to avoid using flares as much as possible because it can leak.